I, the seeker of adventure, do solemnly swear on the noble art of magic that I will abide by the laws of the land, and that I will always be truthful and wary upon my quest, and that I do not use magic for my personal gain, but to advance peace and prosperity to the inhabitants of the land of make believe -athon. Hello everyone, my name is Ariel and this is week two of believe -athon. You might have noticed my lighting has improved a little bit. Um, I don't know if I can handle it though because I just saw myself in the clip that I recorded before this and my cheek looks like a stripe because of my highlight and I'm not used to being called out like this. But this light, I can't hide anything so it's gonna be really difficult so I'm gonna have to learn my face all over again because you know I was used to cheating. So like I said, today is week Today is Monday, so that's the start of week two of believe -a -thon. and currently I am reading A Wish in the Dark by Christine Soontornvent. I am... I put the dust jacket on upside down, I realized, because I had taken it off, <laughs> and I was looking for my bookmark, but I take it off when I read it, and I put it back on for this clip, and I realized I put it on backwards, so there's my bookmark. I am over 100 pages in. I want to get at least halfway through it today. All I have left really for believe -a -thon, is this as well as The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. And then I also do want to get to The School for Good and Evil and whatever ones that I had mentioned in my previous vlog. Also, I'm not going to talk about it in this, but there's another book that I stopped halfway that I want to finish this week. So we'll see how far we get. But I have the day off today and like I said, I already have a good chunk of this finished. And I was planning on filming a lot of other videos today, but then I realized now that I have this light, I'm not a vampire who's a slave to the sun anymore. Or like the reverse of a vampire. Because before, I had to wait until the sun was up and shining and in a good place before I could film because that's what I use for my lighting but now since I have this I don't need to worry about that anymore so literally I could film something tomorrow or any day I could film something in the middle of the night which just opens like a realm of possibilities that was never available to me which is perfect for today too because it's actually like raining outside which is strange because literally like yesterday it was like 80 to 90 degrees and now it's raining I don't know what's going on but anyways so hopefully you guys enjoy the new lighting I'm still trying to figure it all out I have this little cover um but then it also comes with like an orangish one too which I might actually use because I kind of like a warmer look rather than feeling like I'm in Stephanie Meyer's Twilight movie adaptation where everything is just blue but yeah so far I'm enjoying the book there's not really much to say I just wanted to check in and welcome you guys to the vlog and hope that you guys are having a good believe -a -thon. and I also wanted to test this out so this will be my first clip introduction I'm liking it though I'm a main character named Pong and then another main character named Nock and their worlds are kind of colliding. I really, it's, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't really have much to say because it's like too soon. We haven't really gotten to the main part of the plot yet. But I am enjoying it. And it's not taking me too long to get through. So I do plan to finish at least half of this, if not more, today. and I'm a little less than halfway through A Wish in the Dark and I want to try at least get three-fourths of the way done before I call it a night which I think is very doable. Um, I'm really liking it so far. It is about a boy named Pong who finds the opportunity to escape from prison where he has lived. Um, he was born in prison and there's like a law where all children who are born in prison, they have to stay there until their 13th birthday, even though they've done nothing wrong. That's just how it is. But he manages to escape. He's taken in by this group of monks and he's just like treated as an equal, but he has been hiding the fact that he's a prisoner until the day that the governor's, not the governor's, he was like the warden of the prison. He gets reassigned and his daughter who recognized Pong while he was in the prison sees him in this village with the monks and she is trying to prove herself. So she is out to capture him. So it kind of like goes on this whole big chase but I'm really liking it so far. I love Pong as a main character and his friendship with Somkit. They're both really adorable and really sweet and that's all I can pretty much say. Again I'm about halfway through and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it all wraps up but for now that is just my quick little update and I will see you guys in the next clip. <laughs> for a quick car update. Today's Tuesday. No, today's 
Wednesday. I don't think I filmed anything yesterday. Let me tell you, I was mad. This has nothing to do with middle grade, but I was mad because we did not receive any copies of Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes yesterday, and I had put in a reservation, and we didn't receive any of them yesterday, so I was pissed. And now I'm gonna have to avoid Twitter for like an entire week because people are- I've muted as much as I could, but I've already gone on there and like Fortunately, I've been managed to like wipe like my memory or the screen like as soon as I see anything to do with it I'm like nope nope close it out close it out and yeah I've like muted like so many words but it's still popping up and, and so you know I just have to avoid it and it's really hard so if anyone's trying to communicate with me on Twitter right now it's not the best time because I'm avoiding it like the plague because I do not want any spoilers <sighs> I wish like ugh, I understand that everyone's excited about it but like just seeing it on my timeline, you know the book just came out yesterday and you're already like just flagging everything like about that's going on with the book. It's just like, can you like do a group chat or something? <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. So many times I've opened up the app and then I'll see the word like snow and I'm like just covering like my phone. And so I just have like the bottom bar so I can look at my notifications <laughs> because it's just all over the place. And I don't even know when I'm gonna be able to start reading it because, okay, so now we'll talk about reading updates. I finished A Wish in the Dark last night and it was really good. I rated it four stars. I really liked the friendship, like I said, uh, between Pong and Somkit, it was just probably my favorite aspect of the story. I think it was really well done. There were a lot of twists that I didn't see coming, which I really liked. Again, kind of with Nevermore, I feel like a lot of the times, especially middle grade and YA, I can see the twist like far ahead before it's being revealed because I feel like they kind of like make, they like plant the seeds pretty obviously. But with both of those books, I did not, like when they were revealed, I was like, okay, there's like the explanation. Like, I don't, I was, it was well done. I'll say that. They would, they didn't make it obvious. So I really enjoyed both of like, uh, those books, like plot reveals, things that can't, yeah. Anyways, I don't, we're getting, I don't know how to describe this. We're getting away from the topic. Um, but so I really liked the ending as well. I thought it was really sweet. This book, did I ever mention what it's about? I think I just said it was like a retelling of Les Miserables, which I would say retelling is like loose. We mostly follow Pong, who is I guess the Jean Valjean character of Les Mis. The other main character, Nock, is like the person that's like trying to get the Jean Valjean character, aka Pong, back into prison because Pong manages to escape. He's been living on his own or he's been taken in by these monks and he's been safe and hasn't been revealed that he's a prisoner, that like an escapee. Until Nock comes back into his life, they like are still searching for him after all this time. Anyways, so along with like how Les Mis, it talks about class and privilege and um, how just where you were born has a lot to do with how much you will succeed in life. Like you wanna believe that everyone has the same opportunities, but that's entirely not true. Your environment very well can hinder how like how far you exceed in life and like I said so Pong didn't do anything bad to be in prison when he was a child he was just born by someone who wasn't like his mother gave birth to him in prison and so all these kids who were children of prisoners they are kept captive in their own kind of prison like little reform center as they say until they reach the age of 13 and they've done nothing wrong but they still are in this prison and because some kid is trying to get a job and he's a really good mechanic but no one will hire him because he he has everyone that was in the prison has like a tattoo that's marked on them and um no one will hire him because he used to be in prison and even though like he was there just because he was born there not because he had done anything wrong he couldn't you know get a job and he couldn't do things like the legal route, you know what I mean? And it was none, it wasn't his fault. And then it, it's a really good social commentary because like in real life, a lot of people who have been in jail, they end up falling back into jail, but that's because like life circumstances, they don't have any other options. And sometimes, you know, once you've been in jail, you kind of are like, it's not so scary. Like it's, you know, you get a place to stay, you get a meal, it might not be the best, but like a lot of people who leave jail, sometimes and especially if it was something minor or something they had no control over they um they don't have the same opportunities um because you know people look down on them they have no other resources maybe they don't have family they resort back to theft to get by um so i liked that it talked about that a lot like i said um it was really well done so i liked it and now i've started percy jackson and the battle of the labyrinth i'm only about 50 pages in and i'm tabbing it and so far <laughs> loving it so much this is already starting to be probably my favorite book in the series i'm trying to forget 
the spoilers that I learned because I'm, you know, still mad about that. But, you know, so far, um, it's doing a good job to erase my memories. Okay, one of my managers pulled up, so I gotta go now because we gotta go inside. Thursday, and I got home from work. Is it Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. Got home from work, back outside again. I have not updated in a little while. I don't know how cool this vlog is going to turn out, but I am so close to finishing Percy Jackson, and it is so so good this is pro like 100 percent my favorite book in the series so far there have been so many plot reveals that i completely did not see coming these oh i don't know if you can tell but we've tabbed her up and we love that um so i'm gonna hopefully record my reaction for the rest of it and or at least like i don't know i'll record i don't know what i'm gonna record yeah, so I'm super excited to finish it, and that is the end of my official journey. I still have, you know, the weekend, so I might read uh, The School for Good and Evil, but so far I've stuck pretty well to my TBR, and I'm super happy. And this, already like a five star, out of this entire process, we've had three five star reads, and that is spectacular. Anyways, so I'm so excited. Love Believeathon. Hope you guys are going as well, but yeah. So I'm about to finish Percy Jackson, and I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Okay, so today is Saturday and it's been quite a bit since I've updated. Tomorrow is Sunday, which is the last day of the readathon. And I have, like I said before, officially finished my journey because I finished Battle of the Labyrinth, which was my keep bookkeeper stronghold prompt, which was to read the last or the next book in a series. And I was going to try and go to Mermaid's Lagoon because when I finished Battle of the Labyrinth, it was Thursday, like Thursday evening, Thursday afternoon. And I was going to try and get to the School for Good and Evil by Salman Chanini and I only read the first couple of pages and I really liked it. I think I actually want to get it in hardcover because I was finding it was difficult for me to read this and then keep it in like a nice condition which was like some of the UK paperbacks they're so stiff that they just kind of like go back to their original form but I don't know I feel like I'm gonna mess this up and I don't want to and um I actually do like the hardcovers anyways that's just a secondary excuse I didn't get very far into it today's like Saturday morning and I figured I would just stop this because there is another reason why I'm gonna be moving on from Believeathon even though I've had such a great time and I've had a plenty of five star reads I don't know if I mentioned it but I gave Battle of the Labyrinth five out of five stars. My favorite book in the Percy Jackson series by far. So good. So many plot twists. I have like tabbed that up entirely and all of like the red ones are for plot twists and like I have like five of them. Oh my god it was so good. Also there were so many great Persebeth moments in this book and my heart was just soaring so I cannot wait to pick up the next book which I'm gonna do next month that way I can finish off the series. Might as well just end it on a strong note. I was really enjoying this. I mean uh, the four pages that I read. Like I said there is another reason why I'm gonna set this down and why I'm closing out this vlog a day early and that's because I recently got Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It finally came in at my store and so I actually am going to buddy read this with my friend Haley. You've heard me mention her on my channel. We're really excited and I do want to do like a dedicated vlog to this. I know everyone's doing it but I have been waiting for so long. I've been avoiding everyone like on Twitter, on YouTube. I haven't watched like anyone's reactions. I've seen some like opinions but I'm trying as best as I can to not have anything influence me. Like I have not been on Twitter. I have like barely been on booktube because I'm just trying to avoid it and yeah so I want to end this vlog because I want to start my vlog for this and my discussion and review and it would just be kind of difficult to have this keep running while I'm reading this and trying to juggle both vlogs so I figured I would just end my Believeathon journey here but thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this vlog this one was kind of a little bit messier than my last one I was gonna try and make it aesthetic but then I just like ran out of time to do anything but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys had a great Believeathon let me know what books you've read recently and what you thought of them if you liked them or disliked them also let me know if you're reading Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes I know a lot of us are um please don't tell me your opinion though or any spoilers like I said because I want to go into this and I want to try and reply to the comments if I do get any of them but yeah that is the end of the journey and I will see you guys next time bye
just do it to me.